Welcome back to How a Realist Hero Rebuilt the Kingdom, and the review, episode number two. This one was covering the newest episode of the series, If You Possess an Aptitude, We'll Make Use of It. The word aptitude, I don't think it's actually used in the actual episode itself. This comes from basic, now, the thing is, this episode does die from chapter two, but only 50% of the chapter is adapted. They did make some cuts here, mostly it's little bits of dialogue they cut from this particular chapter, which I'll get to basically as thing goes on. You start off with basically, I think it's, well, an explanation of the kingdom itself, like sort of the magic base. Basically, this all comes from like the opening page of the second chapter. It's pretty accurate. And then the king himself basically tries to test out what exactly his his magical power is. He touches a statue of a gargoyle, and he gets the power of what looks like telekinesis. Well, he calls it living poltergeist, where he possesses the ability to basically transfer his head, copy his conscience into small objects to allow him to basically get the job a little faster while also there's people there. Obviously, so. He, of course, Lucia comes in. Of course, they, a lot of the scene is pretty much exactly up to the mont in the actual book itself. And not really much any change here. Of course, he works overnight. And he goes on a stroll with Lucia, which this actually is in the book, too. Much about the fact that he wanted to show us something, basically, about the crops. Which, yeah, this particular thing does come in the book itself. And, well, for the first half of the chapter, he says basically there's lots of these cotton fields across the whole country, and he wants to basically lower them down and just basically make a lot of them to food crops. And say that this is the reason why we have food shortage, which I can kind of believe that's probably, that's pretty believable the reason why. I mean, you grow more cotton, more than you grow food. So basically, increase demand for this over the demand of food. So he wants basically decrease the number of cotton fields, and basically make it more into food crops. He versus as commercial crops, which a lot of stuff what he's saying is pretty accurate. So, it's like, that's the reason why. And then later on, we see them basically just eating. Yes, eating. We, we, they do keep the bit in of him basically, like, having it when he's holding his hands around the sea's belly. He's like, don't squeeze too tight. And he's like, first of all, a horse. And yes, it's having book two, so don't worry, they did not make that for the anime. Then of course, like right after that. Then of course, um oh yeah. Like as soon as basically that they get back to the hall itself, like they have looks like lunch. And this thing is mostly the same. Now, this is where the changes do happen here. Mostly the custom dialogue out here. This is where they first bring up the three the three dukedoms. Want to control the army, navy, and air force. For some reason, they cut this out of this particular scene, even though this is probably here. The whole point of this particular scene, this point of dialogue, is to set up book two. But for some reason, they cut it out. I don't know what was the reason for it. So... They meet up with Sir Luke's Arcs. They also mention about the weapons department, the fact they have mad scientists. And so they mentioned he wanted to meet him. That's what happened in the book itself. In the anime, not really. The conversation between him and Ludwig is very brief. In the anime, it's a little more, a little more dialogue here. That they cut out of the anime, I'm not really sure why. But that's been simply put what it is. I think they're cutting out the, the whole thing with like dukedoms. I think that was kind of a dumb idea. Maybe they're saving that for next week's episode. It's possible. That or they might save it for a little bit later. Where they explain the whole thing with the three dukedoms. Yes. Now, then he comes to the interesting idea. Basically, you talk to the talk with Lucia on the roof of the palace later. He also mentions the reason why he's eating in the in the common in the, in the cafeteria over, let's say, his private room, is because basically they're economizing the castle. So he eats here. He looks like he eats some soup and some bread. So, and Ludwig eventually he's the captain of the royal guard, probably somebody who knows the, who knows the princess for quite a long time. Yep. So 
he comes an interesting idea, basically, because, well, the staff, basically, he got, when he became king, basically, the staff who got the country the situation it is. So he wanted to change that and bring some new people in. They met about the fact that 30% of the country can read and write, 70% cannot, and he basically is appalled by this, the fact that not only can read and write. So basically, I mentioned about the whole thing about the Jewel broadcast, which he's taken a bit back by it. He wasn't really exactly familiar with it in the book. In the, in the way that he's been in the show, it seems like the way they discussed it, it was like this discussion, part of the discussion may be discussed off screen, mind you. And then they decided to just use the actual Jewel broadcast. And I got at least got handed to where the anime presented it. It looks really good. And, and so basically, he gives a spiel about basically. But if you have a gift, like we can utilize and make a proper subject, whatever. This is straight from the book. And then we see various new characters who's going to appear in the very next episode. We have a lot of brand new characters making debut in just this episode alone. We see a debut of Poncho. Yes, a guy basically known for eating a lot of food. Yes, in the books, what I've read so far, by the time I watch, oh, by the way, in case you're curious, though, I have read the book for right now. He has not played a big role at all, but he's there just to be a taste tester. And we see the little girl, I think her name is Tommy. She does play a minor role in the book. She basically comes, well, I'm not going to spoil exactly what happens with her, because her role becomes an integral part of basically the fam the royal family. We have the first appearance of Juvia, who is a very beautiful woman with blue hair. We see her first appearance in the anime, where she basically is watching the broadcast, and then in the end of the episode, she's walking to the capital. We also see the first appearance of Aisha. Yes, who is a dark elf, mind you. Yes, she's a dark elf, and like she basically goes out to the capital to use her, basically her aptitude, well, basically her gift. And I like the fact we get, we get a little bit focused on these characters. I mean, this kind of basically is their debut here. I think they show up like in the next part of the chapter, but that's when they first show up in the actual book itself. I love the fact the anime basically included them. Basically, when they first showed them, that's complete anime original. Right there. And a lot of this stuff basically is done really well here. And I personally just cannot wait for next week's episode which is going to be showing off the gifts, basically. That comes with the second half of Chapter 2. Mm -hmm. Yes. Interesting, though, they only adapted 50% of the chapter. Like, if I look up here, I think it's like only like 10 pages. Yeah, I think it's like roughly like 10 pages, I'd say. Yeah, because, well, the chapter itself starts on page 33. This is what I read out when I downloaded the book itself. Yeah, the chapter starts on page 33 of the book. And, of course, the chapter is called Start from Eck. That's where we start there. And then, pretty much, they go straight to, like, I would say about halfway, about halfway down to uh, page 43. Where they get like part way down in the actual like I'd say about a portion. So basically about ten pages. Well roughly I would say a small portion of the chapter. So my guess is because of how important this chapter is, they're probably going to basically explore it basically for next week's episode, which should be interesting. I'm hoping they finish up the chapter. And in case you're curious though, the book itself is is like 200, I think it's like 30, 31 pages. Yes, that is how long the book is. So hopefully next week they might actually finish up the book itself. Yep. So yeah, that's a particular review. Stay tuned for my next review, which will be the next second episode of The Case Study of Atlantis. Okay, so next video. Bye.